Um, I suppose at some point I should highlight that I always want students to like work things out by hand and your calculator should only be used to kind of verify that you have the correct answer. And so what I'm going to talk about now is adding fractions uh, or multiplying fractions or dividing fractions. But let's enter in two fractions. So remember that three sevenths is kind of like three divided by seven. And let's say I want to add that to five divided by six. Now, I'm not going to go into the math principles of this, but basically before you can add fractions, you have to find a common denominator. And uh, once you find the common denominator, you rewrite these fractions as equivalent fractions, sharing the same common denominator, adding the numerators, and then you get an answer. Well, if I hit enter on the calculator, it's going to spit out a decimal answer, 1.26. But that doesn't necessarily help me check to see if the work that I did uh, was correct. What I can do though, if I come over here and click on math, notice that the very first, first option uh, has this arrow and it says FRAC. Now what that, um, what that does is that will take my answer and change it to a fraction. Now right now it's written as an improper fraction, in other words 3 divided by 7 or 3 sevenths plus 5 divided by 6 or 5 6. When I add them together they have a common denominator of 42. In other words the sum of these two numbers is 53 over 42. But now let's assume I want that answer as a mixed number. What I can do is I can go and go into the mode and come down to the fraction type. So if I scroll down here, see how it says fraction type? It, N over D, that's an improper fraction. In other words, you just have a numerator over a denominator. And this option will give me a mixed number. So now that I have that option selected, if I were to enter in 53 divided by 42 and hit enter, I still get a decimal, but now when I hit math and convert that to a fraction, my answer comes back as a mixed number. In other words, 53 over 42 is actually equal to 1 and 11 40 seconds. Okay? Now this apply the, this works for anything that we do. In other words, if I say 2 divided by 3 times the quantity 3 divide it by 4. Now here you don't need to worry about common denominators. We should have the numerators multiplied over the denominators multiplied. In other words, 2 times 3 is 6 all over 3 times 4 which is 12 which should reduce down to 1 half. Now 1 half is the same as 0.5 as a decimal but again what I can do is I can, no nope, don't want second, I want math and convert that to a fraction and it converts it to one half. I personally, depending on the situation, uh, if you're in a lower level math class, you probably want to leave the mode where it's mixed numbers, but as you progress into upper level math like high school math, improper fractions are usually um, a little more common. Uh, same with dividing. If I want to um, take three and I divide that. Now remember with a fraction sometimes I'll want to put it in parentheses. In fact let's back up here. I want to take 2 divided by 3 but I want to divide that by a fraction so I have to put it in parentheses 2 divided by 3 divided by the fraction 3 divided by 4. Now when we divide by a fraction, we actually multiply by the reciprocal. So I should get 2 times 4, which is 8, all over 3 times 3, which is 9, or 8 ninths. So when I plug that into my calculator, I get 0.8888, repeating. Um, again, I'm going to hit math, convert that to a fraction, and there it is, 8 ninths. So the only other thing that I would recommend is that sometimes it's more beneficial to put the fraction in parentheses and that way you you know you, you pretty I probably should have done it up here too um, you, you won't run into any order of operation errors okay and so that's how you um, double check your fractions um, operations and mathematics uh, using your calculator remember you should learn how to do this by hand and only use your calculator to double check your work